wherever you are. Um, just a reminder of our antitrust policy. <clears throat> I'm sure it's burned into the into your retinas by now. Um, uh, so on the agenda today, we've got our usual uh, reminders of the upcoming Hackfest and the uh, the election. Um, and uh, then we have a quarterly update from, uh, I, I saw a note last night. I didn't see anything yet this morning. Are we, do we have Adrian or somebody on from the Quilt Project? Seems not, so we may have to defer that. And who's going to do Sawtooth? We have Sean on? Dan's on. I can do uh, Sawtooth. Oh, Dan's, Dan's on, on. okay, good. Oh, yeah, sorry, just a couple minutes getting through the, the multi-click pattern here to get into the Zoom. Okay, you're very faint, or that might be me. Uh, and then we have uh, an update from uh, the public sector working group. They're um, going to request um, a new chair. And, um, and then we have, uh, do we have two updates from the white paper working group? So HART and then uh, healthcare working group. And then uh, we have a proposal from uh, our colleagues with, on the IBM P proposal. Um, any other items for the agenda? All right, hearing none, we can get going, Todd. All right, sounds good. Uh, I'll move quickly through the first stuff. Uh, quick reminder, next Hackfest, Montreal, October 3rd and 4th, right after Member Summit. Um, beyond that, to keep the cadence going, we're looking at Q1 2019 for Asia Pacific. It's been a bit since we brought it there. We are looking at spaces like the Hong Kong or Singapore. Uh, and then beyond that annual TSC election, just quick reminder, we will start the nomination process August 9th. Details in the link that went out in the minutes, as well as a link to those that are eligible. If you do not see your name on that list and should be, please get in touch with either me or Tracy Kurt uh, ASAP and we'll get that sorted out for you. Uh, and with that, I think let's move over to the project updates. We've got a couple to get through. Uh, the first one being Quilt, Adrian, or someone from the Quilt team, are you on? Um, Todd, before we move on to um, uh, either Quilt or Dan. Yep. Um, and I realize my connection is kind of crappy. Um, are we going to get next week a list of the... Um, uh, the eligible voters to review and uh, what about the work group chair is that is Tracy doing that behind the scenes it, that should already be in there Tracy are you on it's in the oh it's in the, the link of the, the process it, it should be in there um, that's how we had it built out so let me connect with Tracy if she's not on and just we'll we'll make sure that's done Okay, well then I would just then urge people to review the, the list and if you think you should be on it <laughs> and you're not, then um, it's, you, you've got a couple of weeks to, um, to get to Todd and Tracy and, uh, or if you're on a working group to your working group chair to, um, uh, to, to make that. Um, oops, muted, unmuted. Uh, so, um, unless Adrian is on or somebody from Quilt, I guess we can hear from Dan. Yeah, so I can jump right. right into it then. Go um, ahead, Dan. Somebody post the link in the chat, please. Todd, I don't know if you want to. Yeah, talk. yeah, I'll, I'll do it. No, not a problem. In, into the TSD chat. Yeah, no, I was saying we could otherwise just pop it on the screen. Otherwise, I could share my screen, whatever's easiest there. Um, but I will launch into it since it seems like we got a pretty full agenda here. Uh, I guess uh, it took me longer to put this update together than I thought it would. I ended up spending a lot of my afternoon on this, uh, uh, but that turned out to be a good thing. So I didn't really uh, recognize how much we had been, uh, how much we'd accomplished here. So basically all good news on the sawtooth front here. Uh, I feel like we still have some good momentum from our uh, release announcement earlier this year that we still have new people come into the platform even though we haven't made a whole lot of new public announcements. Uh, we still see good 
commit traffic from a variety of, of places. And so that all seems very healthy. And the core maintainers and uh, new contributors have been adding a lot of new features. So I've called out a, a few of those up at, at the, the top there. Uh, so these are things that are in master, but necess not necessarily in a release. So the, uh, the more adventurous out there have already been grabbing the, the nightly builds out of master and working with these new capabilities. So the one that's listed on there is WebAssembly. This is a different way to do smart contracts. Um, out in the Ethereum com community and uh, EOS, you're seeing some some more experimentation with with the same mechanism, and it's it's kind of a way to do smart contracts, but not have to be involved with with Solidity specifically. That you can you can use uh, a whole variety of languages that that end up being uh, treated like like bytecode that you can store then on the chain. Uh, another really big feature that we've been working on for a while is a notion of consensus engines. Uh, consensus engines are uh, essentially taking the the, uh, the consensus separate process. And one of the main advantages of that is we can now incorporate consensus algorithms that have been written in different languages. So kind of like our transaction processor model that you can write transaction processors in different languages and, and they communicate uh, over a, a clean boundary with the core. Now that's the same thing for consensus. So the outcome of that is we're seeing uh, maybe two or three new consensus algorithms becoming available for Sawtooth uh, around our next release. And those will be uh, raft. Uh, which is nice and fast, but uh, we hadn't tackled originally because it's only crash fault tolerant. Uh, but there's a lot of interest in 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 raft, so we'll have raft. Uh, there's also some early work going on with a PBFT implementation, uh, and then we're working on a new version of Poet as well. Uh, the next big thing on the list here is Rust. So implementing Sawtooth internals in Python allowed us to adapt the architecture quickly before our 1.0 release. And now that we're really happy with that architecture, we're sort of solidifying it in Rust, uh, even though that sounds <laughs> maybe a little funny to solidify something in Rust. But yeah, so we're, we're moving from an interpreted language to a compiled language and uh, we're anticipating some significant performance benefit from that. Uh, we had feedback from the community on um, challenges with de deployment. It's fairly straightforward to deploy Sawtooth since we've got a, a, a unified ar architecture for the validators. You don't have to deploy different styles of nodes. Uh, just the same, uh, a lot of people wanna be able to, to deploy things rapidly in cloud environments and uh, or sort of farm things out within their own data centers. And so we've got an Ansible repo now that will help uh, lower the bar for people to, to do bigger deployments of Sawtooth. We've also improved our documentation so that developers coming in uh, sort of answered the frequently asked questions there. Uh, and then we had one more SDK that came in, uh, it must've been around the time of our last update, uh, but this one was, was particularly interesting because we had somebody that Oh, we hadn't seen out in the, the community beforehand, uh, just sort of show up out of the blue with, with a .NET SDK. Uh, so that was, that was pretty neat to see uh, just from a, a community perspective. Uh, and then the, the last thing that I'll go through on the, the big changes in the Sawtooth world is that we've added an RFC process. And the idea with that is before somebody goes and spends a lot of time on, uh, on a big feature that might imply some little architectural changes or from their, their perspective, little changes to the system. We don't want them to spend that time and then find out when they come offer it that, uh, and this goes for core maintainers as well as, as uh, new contributors, that there is something architecturally inconsistent about that. And so we wanna get support for the feature early on before somebody invests the time in writing it. So this process isn't meant for bug fixes. It's not meant for relatively small features, but if you wanna add something like the WebAssembly capability, 
it's good to put that through the RFC process and then everybody uh, gets a chance to get some input on there if they see something that's that's a design flaw or something that's architecturally inconsistent or on the positive side just that there's some awareness that a feature is coming before uh, uh, before uh, you go through the whole process of implementing it. Okay, so that's all the, the high level stuff with Sawtooth. I did want to reflect some issues. Uh, there was a sense from some of, of the other maintainers. So I, of course, sit in this TSC meeting on a weekly basis, but a lot of the other maintainers, uh, they spend most of their time working on the Sawtooth code or in other aspects of their day job. And I don't know that they felt well attached to this aspect of the Hyperledger organization. I feel like uh, in encouraging some more participation out in the meetups is is helping to close that gap, but uh, still wanted to to reflect the views of of some of the other maintainers out there. Um, maybe slightly related to that, I understand there's there's global meetups that that Hyperledger helps facilitate, and I don't know if if our maintainers, uh, if all of our maintainers feel plugged into that process as well. Uh, and then there was something that's a little bit tactical here, but but as far as access to the project pages, well, we had a maintainer report that, that he'd been rejected from, from requesting access to that. Uh, so uh, just as a feeling of, of ownership of, of a project and proper involvement from the maintainers in the way that and what <clears throat> what project page are you referring to? The Sawtooth project page, or yeah, the one the Hyperledger.org slash project slash Sawtooth or whatever it is. I believe so. So Dan, the, um, Dan let me connect up with you. Let me connect up with you offline on that and figure out what happened, and we'll get that sorted out for you. Okay, great. I, I assume it was something logistic, but um, you know how people feel when they get rejected for something, so. Uh, maybe we patch that up quickly. Uh, let's see here. As far as things within Sawtooth, we've been sitting on our latest bug release for a while, and this is an aspect of people being really deep on working on new features. And we had something just about at the finish line and release, and then I think there was a, a protobuf uh, change that was pushed from the from the Google project that. that broke some things and uh, anyway, we're just kind of coming around to getting that out. So that's something that I'm not real happy with, but uh, uh, we're working to resolve that. The increased, the continued increase in interest in Sawtooth means that the, the chat and the PRs are increasing and that's, uh, we're still trying to stay on top of that, but I, I am seeing a little increase in those cues. So again, that's just, uh, I guess, more effort on, on, on those activities. And, oh, uh, yeah, last item there is that we've been in the process for a while of looking how to get off of um, a Jenkins environment that was originally donated by Intel and getting that into the, the Linux Foundation's hosted or the Hyperledger's hosted um, Jenkins environment. I think that's moving along but I just wanted to make, uh, make everybody aware of that. <clears throat> uh, all right, almost done here. So releases, we, I, I kind of covered, we, we've been stalled on that 105 uh, for no great reason there. Uh, and then that probably won't include a lot of the doc fixes that we've done that, that we get a lot of frequently asked questions from the developers. So those doc fixes are available in the nightly master build. So that's normally what I link people to when they're asking questions. Uh, but that's uh, maybe not intuitive, of course, if you just land on the page and go looking for the latest docs. Uh, so that'll be in the 106, which should probably just trail 105 by a couple weeks, ideally. And then uh, all those features that I mentioned up top uh, for things like Rust and Raft, uh, targeting those for a developer preview in uh, the August time frame. Uh, let's see here. So moving into communication. Um, 
uh, like I said, chat and everything is up. Uh, still seems to be the case that very few people are interested in using the, the mail server. Um, I guess that's just maybe something that's stylistically different from uh, what, what other people expect uh, or communicated about having the, the mail list activity. Uh, it seems like everybody's just happy to use chat. Uh, we do, besides email and chat, host a phone call every week to help app developers get over any starting obstacles or advanced obstacles. And that's proven to be pretty popular, uh, but that was all US friendly time zone. So we are creating an Asia friendly time zone call. And I don't have the, the time for that now, but all of that will be available on the, on the community calendar, along with the rest of the uh, Hyperledger project meetings. Uh, besides that, that app developer call, we also have a tech forum that typically follows this TSC meeting on alternating weeks. Uh, we canceled the one for this week because of some scheduling conflicts, but there's two, uh, the, the next couple items on the agenda that I should have put in there are uh, MinBFT, so that's a new consensus algorithm that will be presented by um, <clears throat> uh, be presented by by uh, sort of a, a, a new contributor I guess and then um, there's been a couple people including myself that have been experimenting with with ZK snarks and how you would do a sawtooth application development with with zero knowledge proofs so we'll have a session or two on that following the MinBFT one. Sprint planning and so forth is, is also something uh, that, that you can dial into. And then uh, I think pretty much everything at this point is, is a bit uh, rehashing what we've already covered. So we've got a bunch of new features slated for a 1.1, that should be August. Uh, see the RFCs for descriptions of those features. Uh, and then uh, maybe the only new point there is the SDKs. Those were all part of the same repo with Sawtooth Core, and that was really bloating our build times. So all those SDKs are being spun out. So we've got now, I think, 752 repos. So if you want to grab all the Sawtooth repos, that's a fun task. Uh, but in most cases, you probably just want to be getting the, the SDK releases anyway. Um, other news, so maintainer diversity uh, Bitwise has continued to increase their participation and uh, I believe they've eclipsed Intel in the maintainer count. So uh, as Sawtooth was originally viewed, I think as, as an Intel project because of the, the early contributions there, it's at least not the case from uh, a, a maintainer count perspective at this point, uh, which I'm of course happy with to, to grow some community around there and we have uh, participation from, um, you know, we've got uh, maintainers from a variety of other organizations as well. Uh, and the, the counts for commits and committers and domains, uh, I think I pulled together correctly from across those uh, 9,000 repos that we have. And that's, that's about it. Question for you, Dan. Any questions? Question for you, Dan. Yes, sir. Uh, is a uh, Can you give a brief description of uh, Poet Two because it's it's been so uh, associated in the public's mind with Sawtooth that any changes there would be uh, significant news. <clears throat> Yeah, and we are uh, early in one sense and, and not early in another. Uh, some of the, the research for how to evolve Poet has been going on since last year. Um, so in that sense. Um, <clears throat> Dan and Vipin, can we take this offline because <clears throat> we're um, almost halfway through the call and we have three more updates and a uh, proposal to get through. Sure, so let me just, uh, then the two second version of it is that POET2 reduces the hardware requirements, which should increase the uh, breadth of, uh, of machines that are capable of running POET with its uh, Byzantine fault tolerant features. 
you can always run Poet on any architecture if you cut back on that Byzantine protection. Uh, there's different configurations that support that out of the box. You don't have to figure out how to do that. It's just switching which version of Poet you want. Uh, any other questions? So then this is Bahua and uh, uh, how many attendees be present on the weekly meeting usually? On our app developer call? Yeah. Uh, it varies. Some days it's it's just a couple people that pop in with a question and, and the meeting's pretty quiet for the second half of the hour and other days we've got about uh, 20 people. 20 people. So uh, most of people from uh, US part and uh, Maybe how many people are from the Asia area? I don't know. It's, it's, uh, I don't, uh, I'm not sure. Uh, people who may be dialing in from Asia, I don't know if they're just able to dial in at an awkward time. Uh, uh, so I, I don't have a good count there. But I know that we've got anecdotal uh, <clears throat> information that people were unable to reach that time zone, which was why we wanted to spin one up in an Asia friendly time zone. Okay, thanks. Yep. Any other questions? All right, thanks, Dan. Thanks, Chris. Um, Charles, I think, it, you know, in, uh, in deference to um, the team that's proposing the IBANP proposal, maybe we should move that up and then, um, because they're not regular attendees on the call, and then uh, we can, after we get through that, we can uh, proceed with uh, quilt and um, and the white paper. Sounds good. Uh, so, Federica, are you? Federica and the IBMP team, are you are you there? Looks like they're speaking, but on mute. Okay, maybe, maybe we should quickly go to one other. Um, maybe uh, if Adrian has joined, maybe we have the quilt update uh, while they figure out the mute button. All right, sounds good. Yeah, I'm, I'm here. Thanks, Adrian. Right, so yeah, apologies, obviously, that this is very late. Um, things have been a bit a bit hectic of late with changing companies and, and a few things, and I unfortunately have a conflict at this time most weeks. Um, so as, a, as I said in the report, uh, it's been a slow quarter for the project. Um, unfortunately, the main contributors uh, being myself and another guy at Ripple have both been pulled uh, onto other stuff of late because I've left Ripple um, to join a new company who's in the process of joining Hyperledge, I think we'll announce this month, a uh, company by the name of Coil. And David um, has been uh, pretty occupied with some um, deliverables within Ripple that have, uh, I think they're pushing for a deadline sometime later this month that, um, hasn't given him any free time to work on Quilt. Um, some positive news lately, we have a new contributor who's an ex Ripple employee is now freelancing, um, based somewhere in Asia, I think. And uh, he's already started contributing on the issues and code reviews. He's looking to free up some time in the future to contribute more to the code base directly. Um, but otherwise, unfortunately, not a lot of progress on the project uh, last few months. Any questions? Any questions for Adrian? <clears throat> All right. Well, good luck with uh, the new endeavor and um, hope to see yeah, you thanks. guys back and, and a little bit more engaged soon. Um, I know yeah, so a, a comment on our kind of scope. Um, I, I know, you know, we, we had been trying to use Quilt as a home to um, bring, uh, put together feature complete implementations of a lot of interledger components and sort of catch up with 
uh, where the reference implementations are. Um, uh, we, we, in discussing on the last call, decided it may be better to focus on some of the smaller components initially, just have some libraries and focus on interoperability with the JavaScript code as opposed to um, alternative implementations. So uh, we'll probably be focusing more on that over the next couple of months. I know David has plans to um, add a few new codecs for some of the outstanding protocols. Um, so I'm, I'm hoping, yeah, things will improve over the next quarter and we'll have a lot more focus uh, on, on, call it, manageable chunks. Adrian, it's, it's Vipin again. Uh, we are starting a paper on interoperability in the architecture working group. Uh, and sil since Quilt is one of the most uh, uh, prominent interoperability solutions inside uh, the Hyperledger uh, hothouse, I believe, you know, you guys should at least show up and uh, make uh, some contributions there. That'll be much appreciated. I, I'd like to. I'd like to do that. Um, can you can you share the details with me, maybe via email? Um, sure. If I, I I can do it personally, or we can try and get someone to to help on that. Um, I know we uh, this isn't in the report, and I don't know if it, Brian's on the call, but we have been exchanging a few emails about you know Coil and New Business, what we're doing, and we're hoping to you know uh, bring a few other things to the table at Hyperledger as well around projects we're doing. Um, one in particular is called Codius, but I don't want to deviate from the agenda today. Um, maybe maybe we can um, provide some in, info on that uh, down the line. Super. Thanks, Adrian. Thanks, Ivan. Okay, um, Federica and the IBM PP team, do you have, um, are, are we back online? Uh, we still can't hear you. Okay. Ah, you hear that's better. Okay. Yep. I think or not. Oh. I think we lost you again. Yeah, I saw the note that he left the meeting. Should we maybe switch to uh, one of the other uh, updates while they're yeah. showing their connectivity? So, F Federica, um, still can't hear you. I'm, you might want to try reconnecting or dialing in um, via the phone number. Sometimes Zoom can be a little bit tricky. All right. So, if a heart is on, maybe heart, you can give us an update on the. Um, well, actually, um, Todd, how do we want to do this um, public sector chair? Yeah, so this should be pretty straightforward. Um, kind of the context of it was we launched the public sector work group. As that was coming up to speed, Marta Pikarska from the Hyperledger team had been chairing the work group. Uh, the idea was that she would have a three month runway there while searching for a chair. Um, she's found a good chair for that. Uh, so we really just need to take a quick vote on that. Uh, but Marta, I'll let you give uh, some quick context there and your your vote of support uh, for that. But otherwise, that's just a simple vote with the TSC. Thank you, Todd. Uh, can everyone hear me okay? Yes. Great. So, yes, so we've had three meetings now or four meetings. It has been going very well. The group is very engaged. Uh, we have regular 18 people or so. And one of the pair of people that has been uh, showing up for the meetings on a regular basis is very active, she has been very supportive, took on a lot of burden. She was even able to run one of the calls while I was traveling and so on. And the group seems to be very accepting of her. She's very objective, which was the important part of finding a new chair. So that's why I proposed that uh, she would take over uh, as that was the plan anyway. And we don't have to wait the three months if we've identified someone who is good at their job.
Thanks. I, I reviewed the, the resume that you circulated and it looks like Rose has some uh, great background. Uh, this is Dan and I for one think that that looks like a, a great, uh, great option for, for leading the working group. All right, <clears throat> Todd, do you wanna do uh, any yeah. objections? Yeah, if there's no other discussion, um, so for the eight TSC folks on the call, sure. all, all in favor, please say aye. 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 Any abstaining? Any opposed? All right, that passes unanimously. Thank you. So Rose is the new chair. All right. Thank awesome. you. All right. Federica, do we have Aye. you? So sorry for um, this uh, technical um, problem. <laughs> Can no you hear me now? Yes, we can. Okay, thank you very much. Um, so um, we have proposed um, to Hyperledger to become a partner uh, and part of your uh, of your consortium, um, and uh, we have developed uh, this uh, plugin solution in uh, REST API. Uh, I'm not uh, a developer; uh, I'm uh, the marketing manager of uh, this uh, little uh, team. And um, there is here with me uh, our main developer, our uh, CTO, that is uh, Lorenzo. Uh, we are Italian, so we can't speak English very well, but uh, we'll try to, to explain uh, uh, what, uh, what we are doing and what we are trying to do. Um, IBAN Portability Project uh, is a project that is born uh, um, because uh, um, in, uh, in Europe, uh, there isn't the, the, uh, the concept of the, the portability of uh, the account number in banking sector. So uh, customer clients can't switch bank uh, without changing their own uh, IBAN number. Um, this change uh, would be possible uh, because uh, let, let this thing has happened um, about um, 10, 15 years ago in uh, in telco sector. Uh, so in uh, when phone number uh, was uh, only one for uh, each operator. Uh, so when you wanted to uh, to change uh, operator, you had to change also la, your phone number. And um, this was a very big impediment uh, and uh, was uh, a market barrier. Um, a market barrier that uh, now is broken, and uh, we, with uh, our project, uh, we we are trying to to break uh, another barrier in uh, in banking sector and promote uh, the the fintech the fintech uh, activities. Uh, um, so this project uh, is born um, because of this reason, and uh, mm, we have uh, developed uh, a REST API uh, plugin. Uh, that uh, you can see in uh, in a link that uh, I have shared uh, um, in uh, our uh, our proposal, our first proposal that uh, uh, we would like to we have we like to have um, all the suggestions uh, uh, and uh, we would like to to improve uh, and uh, make better um, for uh, for next um, Zoom call. And um, our dream and uh, what we would like to do uh, is to um, give uh, to uh, the Hyperledger uh, Consortium our plugin, um, make it to become uh, an open source plugin that can be shared uh, also, in, uh, also in USA. Um, even if uh, this, uh, this solution was born uh, as uh, um, a European uh, solution, but uh, I have tested that uh, um, also in the USA there is uh, a very big interest about uh, this technology and uh, about um, the, the value proposition under this, um, this project. Uh, right now, uh, we are in a, in a little crowdfunding campaign. We have uh, done uh, many meetups uh, uh, to, and uh, we have seen that many people are interested in this uh, in this activity. And 
so we are uh, in in the marketing uh, uh, activities we are uh, we're moving on and uh, but uh, we'd like to um, make uh, the next step and then the next step is the blockchain hyperledger fabric step uh, so we 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 are trying to um, um, to convince you that that is uh, that is a good uh, um, a good proposal. Okay, can you hear me? <clears throat> yep. No, it was a, a good yeah. overview. So uh, did did you? La, <clears throat> I don't know if you uh, have understood anything uh, because uh, I can't speak English very well. But uh, if you want, uh, I can. Um, uh, give the microphone uh, to all my uh, my colleague. We, we we can understand you very well. Do not <laughs> do not wonder about that. Yeah. No um, problem. <clears throat> so if I'm if I'm understanding this correctly, and I think I do, this is really sort of an application layer. Um, on top, you know, that would that would leverage and underline. I think it under leverages uh, fabric in, in the proposal, um, and and not necessarily a, a sort of a formal component of the, the platform. Is that is am I understanding that correctly? Would this would this um, be usable um, in another context, such as with no, sawtooth no, or? It, it, no, uh, it's uh, it's focused uh, only for banks. It isn't usable in other contexts. Well, she's he's asking about whether the underlying uh, DLT can be anything other than fabric. And uh, because why fabric? Can, can you uh, can you explain why? Yes. Because I'm not not a, a technical figure, but uh, Lorenzo knows better these things. Because we want to have um, isolated transaction. We want to uh, use the the channel and uh, the, the actor in the blockchain can see only our uh, transaction and, uh, and not the, uh, the competitor transaction. We want encapsulated the transaction in the same blockchain. So currently you are only targeting fabric because of, because of the presence of channels in fabric will uh, help your your particular use case is that yeah. correct yes of course yeah so so i think in general privacy um is uh, the key component for their requirements uh, but from the technology but but from the the implementation point of view you no know, bearing that specific requirement of the technology availability on on you know the blockchain in our current blockchain offerings. Um, I, I don't really see you know any uh, any specific constraint that that this wouldn't be able to run on on other implementations like Sawtooth. Mm -hmm. Right. If there's a way to solve the privacy issue, then then you know it should it should be able to support other blockchain implementations. Especially since Dan is working on a ZK Snarks implementation. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, so, I mean, so so it, it strikes me that you know, as sort of an application layer thing, it doesn't technically it doesn't fall within the the, the charge scope of of Hyperledger, which is to basically deal with technology, not applications. However, we did open up the Hyperledger Labs as a a place where uh, that sort of development could take place, and in fact, they've um, uh, they've approved uh, a project called DB Core, which is um, uh, coming from uh, Finland, and again, is, is sort of addressing an application layer on top of one of our um, uh, uh, or potentially others of our DLT platforms. So. Um, <clears throat> I'm wondering, uh, do we have any of the stewards on? I know Tracy's not on, and Arno, but I am a I am a lab steward. Uh, yeah, I, I thought so. But then, so I mean, what's what's your thoughts? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, we have had uh, 
several other um, other solutions that are fabric specific uh, get uh, adopted into the Hyperledger under the Hyperledger hothouse, but that was in the beginning. Uh, and currently, I believe uh, what you said is correct, which is that uh, we would like to think about solutions that are, uh, uh, you know, uh, more applicable uh, across the platforms or developing a brand new DLT on their own. So definitely, I believe that this would uh, belong in a lab. Um, at least in the beginning, um, and then mm -hmm. right. you can uh, uh, seek to grow it outside the labs uh, by, you know, the number of contributions and the plans to expand your scope because labs were only uh, uh, conceived of as a um, sort of a, a, a place where things could grow from or, of course, die because there's not enough uh, life in there, but uh, definitely, you know, getting it into the labs would be the first step if uh, the TSC feels that mm -hmm. this mm -hmm. is an application layer thing and uh, yeah needs to be incubated. It, it certainly feels like it, and I'm so um, Federica. So the process for um, uh, creating the hyperledger labs and it's a similar. It, it's just a different. GitHub organization, but it's still sort of, um, uh, it, it still falls, if you will, under the Hyperledger umbrella, um, but it's just not a formally a Hyperledger project. Um, and, and as I mentioned, there's others and, uh, you know, that are, that are coming into that. And, and I think the organization is still trying to sort of figure out where do solutions and or application layer things fit? How do we you know, how do we support that kind of growing ecosystem around our respective platforms? Um, and uh, so the, the process for that is, is basically, uh, and we, I, can, I can send you a, a, a note that sort of points you to the, uh, the process, but it's fairly straightforward. Um, we basically need to have somebody, uh, a member of the TSC and or one of the maintainers of an existing project um, uh, be a sponsor for this, and then uh, and Vipin can certainly tell you the, the the rest of the process. But basically, then the stewards are responsible for um, approving or or not, as the case may be, um, uh, the uh, addition of a new hyperledger ledger labs, and then they can help facilitate you know getting the repository moved over and setting setting things up and so forth for you. But um, I think that's Again, and I, I, I'd love, love to hear from others uh, on the TSC, um, their thoughts, but it, it feels to me like this is sort of an application layer thing or a solution layer and, and that we should um, steer it towards the, the labs. So this is yeah, Nathan. One of the questions that I had um, is, so I, I think, you know, at the application layer pieces is not as much of a concern for me as it seems like this would just be a single blockchain network versus uh, you know, maybe multiple people that would be deploying something for, I don't know, bond trading or trade finance or whatever. So Frederica, can you maybe speak to that? Would, would there be multiple blockchain networks running uh, this IBNP application or would it just be a single blockchain network shared among all the banks? Mm, single application or blockchain? Can you, can, could you repeat the question? Because yeah, I... is it, would this, uh, the IBNP implementation- I don't know if Kelly's saying this or not, but Go ahead, Dan. <clears throat> a lot of times the, the question about why blockchain uh, needs to be answered first for, for applications. And I don't know if we have the time to get into that here, but uh, if you've got a single, uh, essentially a, a single database interaction between two parties, that doesn't sound like a blockchain problem. But if you've got a multi-party uh, uh, interaction where all those parties have to agree on the same um, on the same state of information. So for example, if you had a uh, store of all the IBAN numbers and, and which companies they associated with, then the entire industry is using that shared database and that's where you would employ a blockchain. So I wasn't clear from this proposal whether 
there was or was not a blockchain need for this application. Mm. Well, from what I understood then, the issue is portability of IBAN across banks. So there are multiple parties involved. It, that was my understanding too. And, and wouldn't that necess, uh, necessitate just a single blockchain network then? Uh, so I guess I'm just trying to d distinguish between yeah. is this an application or is this a single network that would only, you know. Uh, yeah, that, that part I'm a little bit unclear on too, because if this is going to work, then all the banks have to recognize it as such. Right, right. Um, and then to this point about could it be on Sawtooth or Fabric, you know, if there's only going to be one canonical network, then it seems sort of, it, it doesn't really matter about what it uh, could be. Doing. Yeah. Uh, well, actually, there, there, is, well, there are thoughts about interoperability, right? I mean, because uh, if it doesn't have to be a single network, uh, if, if interoperability evolves to a certain point. Uh, otherwise, I agree with you completely that uh, it has to be a single network, but if uh, you know if you can produce those claims somehow, uh, you know across networks, then it could work. Yeah, I mean, I, again, as I said in the chat, this feels a lot also like a an, an indie level application on top of uh, you know the way that indie can work, where it can basically anchor claim on on any blockchain. I, I, I see I, now I, I think what Kelly was saying that there's there would only ever be one deployment of this and that would in my mind also uh, reduce the interest in having this be a um, a standalone project so yeah so I, I think um, again I think Federica I, you know thanks again for um, <laughs> suffering through the the mute button problems, um, and uh, and for making this proposal, but I, I I think that again this this feels a little bit to me like uh, Hyperledger Labs um, proposal, and um, so I think that the sort of the next steps for this would be mm -hmm. to uh, I'll, I'll 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 copy you and and the the stewards of the Hyperledger Labs, and um, and you know with a link to the the, the process, mm -hmm. and uh, and then I think one of the, the stewards of the labs can then sort of help you through the process. Unless if you want to Thank you very much. Okay. volunteer. Okay. Thank you. The process is very lightweight. Yes. Yes. Okay. Thank you very much, Federica. The process to get into uh, the lab. Thank you. Too. Thank you very much. Thank okay. you very much. So um uh, do we have time, Hart, to do the white paper working group? It's hard on. Yeah, I'm here. Sorry. It took me like three clicks to unmute again. Um, sure, I can go over stuff. Uh, so, sure. Um, I posted the update form last night, and I was hoping to have the actual final white paper uh, this week. But um, unfortunately, it looks like we're still waiting on some uh, marketing committee approvals. There have been a bunch of people on vacation, uh, but the long and short, excuse me, the long and short story is the white paper is essentially finally done. Um, and uh, hopefully everyone should be able to look at it next week. Um, I was going to propose that since the white paper is done, the group, uh, well, we're basically planning on essentially going dormant. Uh, it might be worth it to keep the uh, email list around as a lot of people I know, like the architecture and identity working groups are, uh, are heavily writing papers and it might be good to have sort of expertise from people who have slogged through uh, kind of the the long process of getting a big document from uh, you know from a lot of different people um, so 
so I know we don't have a lot of time and we still have some more stuff to do. Um, so I guess I'll just open it up to questions. I think most of the stuff I wanted to say is in the little document, including the kind of funny quote from the, uh, from the technical writer. All right, Mark Wagner, if you uh, want to jump on the performance and scale working group on Tuesday morning, then uh, Melissa wants and, and sort of give us some more stories and things to look out for because we're about to get involved with a tech writer. Um, yeah, I don't know that I can make it every morning. I usually have a conflict Tuesday mornings, but if you want to, uh, if you want me to come one particular morning and discuss it and, and some of the things that worked and some of the things that didn't, I'd be happy to do that. Great, thanks. I'll follow up with email. Yeah, awesome. All right. Well, I, I want to personally, you know, so thank you, Hart, and the whole team um, for, um, you know, a great, well, a couple of great pieces of work. And, um, um, uh, I mean, again, thank. It's amazing. I, I'm, I'm torn about you know sort of um, uh, decommissioning the the team because it's been so effective. Um, uh, but yeah, I, I can also appreciate that um, you know that now that the work is effectively complete, it doesn't necessarily make sense to um, to sort of keep hanging on unnecessarily. We can always reconstitute the group, I suppose, if we if we have a need to. Yeah, and to do another another white paper, but um, uh, I'll just sort of open up by saying thank you. Well, thanks. I guess applause is in order. Well, it's not. Let's not go that far. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, so I was going to propose that um, basically we uh, our meeting schedule has already dwindled. So we'll just. Uh, I was going to say maybe we uh, we just don't. Um, we don't schedule meetings, or if we do schedule meetings, we schedule them very infrequently, but we leave the uh, email list and rocket chat up so that uh, people like Mark, who are interested in kind of uh, pulling the expertise from this group or asking questions, uh, can still use that as a resource. And that if we ever want I, to- I, I think that's, that's a useful thing. I know I've in a past, um, uh, you know, when we were, when I was doing the web services work, we actually did that with, I can't remember now which one it was. We, we actually kept the working group sort of in a um, uh, suspended animation state for a couple of years um, to see if anything else came up. Nothing else, else did, but um, it, it's one way. And then all we did was, uh, it, uh, this is W3C, so we had to report annually to Tim Berners-Lee and tell him, Nothing had happened, right? And then they finally uh, sort of pulled the plug on it. But um, we, we could do that. We could keep things in place and just sort of go into a, a dormancy cycle and, and remove you temporarily from the, the quarterly updates. Yeah, I mean, I we won't have a ton of things to, to update, obviously, but I just want to, I want the group to still be a resource for people that yeah. are writing their own papers. So I want people like Mark to be able to ask like, because there have been, uh, you know, a lot of, a lot of uh, very core contributors, uh, Mick, Stan, Vipin, Traven, uh, you know, th there are a bunch of other people, um, Nathan, Sean, and, and we've learned a lot about trying to write kind of large scale things with a lot of people. And if you read the, the quote in the update at the very bottom uh, from the technical writer, uh, it wasn't exactly easy, um, and you know there were a lot of, of drawbacks, but we did learn a lot, and hopefully we can uh, we can help others with that knowledge. Okay, well, thanks again, and I, I, unless there's any objections, um, I, I can uh, I, I think that that's a fine proposal to sort of leave it as is and. So unless there's any objections, I think we should just proceed that way. I don't think we need a formal vote. And yeah, and once right. the, oh, we're at, once Sorry, the 
Yeah, sorry. Once the marketing committee gets final approval on the uh, white paper, I'll send it out to everybody. Um, it should be soon. There's some conference this weekend they wanted to use it for, but there's some, I don't understand what's really going on, but it, it should be soon, so. Okay. All right, well, thanks everybody. Thanks. Thanks, Art. Thanks, thanks a lot, to, Art uh, all the members. Thank you. Thank you. All right, with that, I think we're at end of job. So thanks everybody and apologies again for the um, the, the issues with the call, but um, uh, we'll reconvene again next uh, week with uh, the healthcare working group update and um, uh, oh, what was else? Aroha, I think, was next. Yep. Okay. Thanks, everyone. Cheers. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. 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 Bye.